welcome to the IdeaGen Future of Global Summit live here in Washington, D.C. It is so incredible always to be in the presence of the future, the future health professionals. Hosa, welcome. I'd like to ask, would you kindly introduce yourselves, please? Good morning to everyone. My name is J.C. Ramirez. Uh, I am the president for D.C. Hosa, and it is a pleasure, an honor, and a privilege to be with you. Good morning. My name is Molly Kirsch, and I currently serve as the treasurer for DC HOSA, and I'm really excited to be here today. Good morning. My name is Henry. I run the Office of Public Relations, and it's an honor to be here with you guys. Well, it's incredible to have HOSA in the house here today at the Idea Gen Future of Global Summit. Um, what types of experiences have shaped your journey in becoming members of the DC HOSA Executive Council? Would like to answer first. Uh, personally, uh, I always known that I wanted to be in something medical related. Um, medicine has been something that has been taught in my family for generations, and I felt like it wasn't really a hobby, more than a call to action for me. Seeing how it has been something rooted in my blood as to say and to see the effects that it has had not only within my family but within my community as a whole um, and knowing that as long as there's humans existing there will be needs for medicine so that has really impacted me because i have a mentality of something long term you know when you think of a career you don't think of just a nine to five you don't think of something that you do because you need a paycheck. You think of something that you love. And medicine is something that I love. And so being able to partake in HOSA really was just an opportunity that I couldn't let go of. Love it. Incredible. Um, I haven't always known that I wanted to do something in healthcare, but I've always just been curious about learning like how things work. And I've always loved science because it had that ability to explain how we work and how the world works. And then at my school, our advisor kept raving about this new chapter that he was starting. And um, I had no idea what I was getting into, but joining HOSA, I've been able to have so many amazing opportunities like being at this conference here. Um, and it's really opened my eyes to the world of healthcare and how many different ways there are to get involved and how impactful it really is. Incredible. Okay. Um, hello, good, good morning. Um, HOSA has really helped me um, develop myself in learning how to be a better person and getting an introduction into the medical field. Um, where I come from is a small country in Central America. I'm, I'm an immigrant from El Salvador. So sitting here is a very big privilege for me because not many people from my country have this opportunity. And HOSA has just given me the right to have uh, my voice heard and being able to be exposed to some medical things that um, I wouldn't be able to do in my home country. That is just phenomenal to hear your personal stories and your passion, most importantly about medical professions. And I know that HOSA is helping to develop leaders, 300,000 plus students across the world now. And with the upcoming International Leadership Conference, what an exciting moment in time. And to be sitting here overlooking really the world's capital of Washington, DC, it's really my honor and privilege to be here with you all today. So I wanna echo that. And so. For someone who's unfamiliar with what HOSA is, would one of you kindly describe in your own words what HOSA's mission is? What is it trying to achieve? Who would like to take that on? I'd be happy to. So um, HOSA is an international organization made of students from middle school to um, collegiate. And it's really designed to empower students to become leaders in the global health community. And they do this in a number of different ways through, we have competitions with hands-on skills. Um, we do a lot of skill development along with those. And they put a really big emphasis on networking opportunities. So being here talking with you guys and having all of the amazing conferences that we do. Incredible, incredible. It, it, the organization is changing the world on so many levels as you all know. And, and it's helping to develop future healthcare professionals and future healthcare leadership professionals like yourselves. And so what are those future skills 
that you believe are necessary for the changing health professions and for leaders to adapt and change the world, especially within healthcare? Who would like to answer that? Um, I think a really big one is passion, like having a passion for the industry and to helping people, which is, I know, another reason a lot of us are here. Um, and I think that really and like like a dedication to lifelong learning, because this field is changing constantly again with like all of the new advancements happening and new diseases like COVID happening. Um, I think that people just have to be really passionate about learning and about their dedication towards helping people to be able to think really critically on how um, we can best serve people. Incredible. Um, I wanted to add on. Please, yes. yes. I wanted to add on to what Molly said about lifelong learning. We need to keep in mind that in a field as wide as medicine is, you need to be as diverse as possible because you need to understand that not every patient is the same. Matter of fact, not one patient is the same as another. Therefore, you might be treating the same illness with the same symptoms, with the same age range to, to even ethnicity being the same, but it's never going to be the same because each individual is distinct. And so I think that for um, the medical field, it is crucial, not important, but crucial for caregivers and for um, doctors to have that diverse knowledge as Molly was saying and not only that but for there to be an awareness between patient and doctors or patients and caregivers um, because I know that personally it has been um, said that to me that when doctors don't reflect who you are or what you look like you don't trust them and it's logical and it's believable because when we want someone to aid us, we want them to understand us. And we we need to be um, aware that that needs to be seen visibly. We need that contact and that reflection. So I think that for doctors to be aware about all types of backgrounds, it is highly important to be able to offer as best equipped um, aid as possible. Incredible perspective. Did you want to say something? Um, I agree a lot with what she was saying. Um, another important thing to me is that um, being able to like have patience with the with the with the patient because you know many people have different tempers and really if you have the love for the job then it really won't be hard for you because right. um, you continue in having that love for the job that makes people want to come into your office because many people are scared because they say oh in the hospital they take too long they treat you bad so then. Being able to have that love, charity for the people really helps develop a closer bond relationship. So caring for others, passion, yeah. all, these, all these things, please. I also wanted to say, I think another big thing that we really need to work towards is building more trust with the healthcare industry. I think that it's an entire industry designed towards helping people, but I think we're really scaring them away. People are scared to go to the doctor until their injury or their disease gets too like too far advanced and it's too late and people are turned away because they can't afford it or because they're scared of how they're going to be treated once they get there. And I think that that's really not productive. Right. And I think that's also something really unique about our generation is I think that we're a lot more open-minded and have the opportunity to really make a better connection and reputation, I think, wow. for the industry. Incredible. And so on that note, um, what do you all believe has most helped you grow, both as a student, member of HOSA, and then also individually as a person? For me personally, one of the key aspects that I feel have, that I feel have helped me grow is asking questions. Because I was confined in a mentality that if I didn't know, nobody else probably knew when that couldn't have been farther from the truth. I felt that if I didn't know, who was I to ask others? Um, and asking questions not only helps you find the answers to that question, but it helps produce even more questions, you know? And I feel as if you don't take that first step to say, what now? Or what do I do? How do I do it? Where do I go? Then you'll be stuck in the same position. I thought of joining OSA. I stumbled for a bit. I didn't want to, I hesitated. 
my friends were asking me, aren't you in it yet? What, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? I said, I don't know. And I don't know what to do because I don't know where I am until I decided to ask one of our advisors. And I said, what is this? Teach me more about it. I asked her, what do I do? And with the help of God, with the help of the people around me and my advisors and also my arduous work, we're here today. And that is just one of many achievements that I think are to come. And I just, that's what I say, ask ask, ask until you have no more questions and then ask why you don't have any more questions. I love that. Love that. Please. Um, I think something that HOSA has really provided me with that I'm so grateful for is mentorship um, and being able to have all of these people and our, our partner organizations really invest in us and invest in um, teaching us as much as we can. Like I've learned so much about professionalism like I'm here wearing a suit on a school day I think um like I just never thought that that would be possible and I think that being in these situations really have opened my eyes and created like even more of a passion for me to follow yeah thank you that's so inspiring incredible please um Jose for me has taught me that I also have a voice and I also can be heard not just um, from my school or locally, I could be heard internationally through different members, different networking. To so learning like how here to, today, like here today, exactly. I learned that I don't. Even, I probably I don't know if I've seen some of you guys before. Um, some places look familiar, but I feel like being here really gives me the opportunity to know that my voice is heard, that I belong here, that it doesn't matter where I came from or where my roots come from that I have, a, I can make a difference as a Latino, as a Hispanic, as an immigrant in this country. And that's the final word. Thank you so very much. As I like to say, go Hosa. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really a privilege to be here and I'm really excited. I think some of the things that my students have said already as executive members uh, is exactly what we need to hear, right? Like this is, this is the call to develop pipelines, to develop partnerships. And I think DC HOSA, even though we're in this fantastic place that, that does all the right things for as many people as we can, there's not enough resources for kids. And as a state advisor at, in this position now, probably, you know, nine months, um, DC HOSA is brand new. And it's the first time we've had an executive board. So these students have done amazing work. And my, my ask and my call to action is really help us develop this pipeline. They, they are ready, they are willing. Um, we need hospitals to engage with us. We need partners to engage with us. We need uh, people to provide internships. We don't have those opportunities. And the only way these incredible students will learn anything is if they go to those places and do the thing. Schools within the district do not have those resources. Funding continuously gets taken away. Um, and we piecemeal things together and we do incredible stuff. We have hospital beds in our room and we have mannequins and but the educators can only do so much and as a full-time educator my my plea for everybody in the district of columbia and in the dmv is support these kids with the work that really needs to be done um DC, hosa in general meets every one of those sustainability goals specifically looking at number 17 6 3 10 9. those are all the goals that hosa does equity equality um dealing with uh, students from different backgrounds. Like we're we're wanting healthcare to be real and tangible for every single person in the United States. But we have to educate our students first, and with that education, then we can empower and reduce the disparities within the country and and around the globe. So whatever you would like to do, please contact me as the DC State HOSA advisor. Um, and if you're in the Virginia area or in Maryland area, we have advisors in every single state. Um, who do really hard work every single day. Uh, we would love financial support. We would love internship support. We would love partnerships for our local leadership retreats that we do for these students um, because we're not the experts. You, the world, are the experts. Uh, we just provide and facilitate those moments. So uh, thanks for allowing us to be here. And uh, I'm looking forward to having an influx of emails and phone calls to the DC HOSA office or to DC International Public School or DC.
and see public schools wherever. Come find us.